full, it'll finish up at the T-minus six minute mark. Densified liquid oxygen loading is continuing on the first stage and the second stage. Both stages well underway. First stage is nearing a completion, but it won't wrap up until T-minus three minutes. The second stage just began a few minutes ago. That'll wrap up at T-minus two minutes. As we get closer to launch, we will do various checkouts. One is the thrust vector controllers. These are what move the engine nozzles around on the first and second stage engine. And when we move those nozzles, we call it TVC wiggles. Those will be done inside 10 minutes. We'll also be doing checkouts of throttle valves on the engine. Now the range currently is go. Air and sea space are clear. The weather, uh, you heard the briefing from the core up to the crew. We're watching one anvil cloud. It's within five miles, but it's got to just stay more than three miles away, and we will be go to fly. And meanwhile, the Dragon team also had reported they're working no issues. Everything is complete through the countdown. The uh, comp checkouts are finished. The access arm is retracted. The launch escape system is armed. The crew is strapped in and ready to go. We're coming up on final instructions of the crew. We'll hear that at T-minus 10 minutes. They'll configure their displays for launch. They'll get the last messages, and then we'll go into the terminal countdown sequence. Let's listen in to the countdown nut. Dragon SpaceX, confirm crew displays are configured for launch. And SpaceX Dragon, we can confirm crew displays are configured for launch. SpaceX copies. And on behalf of the entire SpaceX team, we are honored to have you aboard Dragon Capsule Freedom today on its next trip to the International Space Station and the second Axiom crew mission. We wish you a great mission, good luck, Godspeed, and enjoy the ride. Let freedom fly. You hear the crew calling back to the ground, let freedom fly. We see them applauding. Everything continuing to look good. We're coming up on nine minutes to launch. Next major event is going to be engine chill at T minus seven minutes. As John just said, at T minus seven minutes, we will begin to flow a little bit of the super chilled liquid oxygen through the turbo pumps, um, which that is basically chilling the hardware, performing an engine chill prior to the full flow. We do that in order to help minimize the chances of the hardware experiencing any thermal shock when that full flow of super chilled liquid oxygen occurs. Now we can see some venting uh, from the vehicle now, totally normal. It is that liquid oxygen just vaporizing as it comes into contact with the ambient air. And Kate, maybe this is an opportunity, you know, we always use the word abort. This might be a chance to let everybody know that there are abort callouts in flight that we're gonna hear. Those are just heads up to the crew that says, should a contingency occur, there's different actions that'll happen at each various stage of the flight, when you're on first stage or when you're on second stage. That's right. We should actually hear Commander Peggy Whitson uh, calling those abort modes out as they are uh, ascending uh, and really getting to orbit. She is tracking everything on her, both her tablet as well on her leg, as well as the crew display above her head. So she is able to identify at which mode they are entering and those modes identify uh, basically where and what sequence Dragon would take at that point in time during the flight. Now we're about 10 seconds away from that engine chill for the first stage. Engine chill has started. All right, right on time. We've opened the valves that are letting liquid oxygen and kerosene fuel down to the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. Our next major activity coming up at T-minus six minutes approximately, we'll hear the announcement that fuel loading is complete on the first stage. And one other comment, while we were hearing the briefing to the crew uh, at the T-minus 10 minute mark, 
We also heard reference to a call out that may or may not be made at T minus 35 seconds. Many of the checkouts of the Falcon 9 are done by computer in the last uh, minute. There is one today that requires an Stage engineer one, one to look at some data. If, for example, that system had an issue, that would be called out at T minus 35 seconds. Right now, everything continues to look good, though, on Falcon 9. We also heard in the briefing that they are tracking an anvil cloud that at the time of the briefing was about five miles away from the pad. Uh, they are tracking it. It just needs to stay outside of three miles. So everything still continues to look okay on that front. The next call out that we'll hear in about 30 seconds is that Dragon has transitioned uh, to the terminal count configuration. That's basically an indication that the Dragon spacecraft has taken over the, space, the spacecraft's countdown and is, will at that point be on internal power. At this point in time, RP-1 is now completely loaded, both on the first and second stages. Lock load continues on both stages. It'll wrap up at T minus three minutes for first stage and T minus two minutes for second stage. Falcon 9 tanks in are pressurizing for trunk rack retract. Pressurization call out. We are putting uh, pressurized gas helium onto the stage in preparation for opening up the clamp arm that's around the top of the second stage. That'll happen uh, just at about the T minus four minute mark. The clamp arm will open, and about 10 seconds after that, the strong back, uh, the structure alongside the Falcon 9, will recline just strong about two, two degrees away. We've heard the call out strong back is retracting. Uh, that starts the sequence now in the ground computer to open the arms and then recline that strong back about two degrees away. At liftoff, hydraulics will then pull the uh, strong back uh, to a position about 45 degrees away from the rocket as it flies out of the launch mount. See the arms opening up now around the second stage. We should now be able to see that strong back track just a couple degrees away from the launch vehicle. Upon liftoff, it will move back even further in order to clear the way for Falcon 9. Looks like we can start to see that movement now. This structure is what is utilized to horizontally integrate the vehicles while still in the hangar, as well as transport them horizontally to the launch pad and then raise them to their vertical launch position. And we've got the strong back is now, you see a little bounce there as it stops. Stage one locks load is complete. And right on time, stage one locks load is complete. We're down to just loading a liquid oxygen on the second stage. That'll wrap up uh, just after T minus two minutes, at which point we'll have the uh, million pounds propellant on board Falcon 9 ready to fly. We can see the vehicle continuing to vent some of that gaseous uh, or the liquid oxygen that has now vaporized. Dragon is in terminal count and is on internal power. We have a live view there of the SpaceX team here at headquarters in Mission Control on the left-hand side, um, as well as the Axiom team from their own Mission Control as well on the right. Dragon SpaceX for weather looks like uh, the system has cleared and we're looking like we're go for launch for weather. All right, we've heard a good news information to the crew. Dragon copies. We're letting them know that it appears the weather is going to avoid the area. That is great news indeed. Just waiting now for the call out liquid oxygen load complete on the second stage. Stage two, locks load is complete. Dragon is in auto idle. Ground gas closeouts, expect loud venting. Uh, 
at Benning. We're now leading off excess pressure in the strong back. That's what's giving that large white plume as cold gas meets the warm Florida air and condenses the moisture. We're coming up on one minute where the flight computers will take over the sequence. Let's listen in to the launch of Falcon 9 with Dragon and the Axiom 2 crew. FTS is armed, Falcon 9 is in startup and is now controlling. Dragon is in countdown. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. Dragon, copy, go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. T-minus 15, T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, engines full power, and lift off Falcon 9, go Axiom. One alpha. <laughs> Copy, one alpha. Together we expand what is possible in low Earth orbit. Ad Astra and Godspeed AX2. Plus 36 second, 36 seconds into flight. A great view of Falcon 9 heading to space. Power telemetry is nominal. A Stage great one call. Down. Power telemetry nominal. We're into the throttle bucket. Is the first stage is throttle down power on the Merlin engines in preparation for max Q. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Faster than the speed of sound as we're getting great views from the first stage camera looking back at Kennedy Space Center in Complex 39A. Stage one throttle up. Max Q. We're out of the throttle bucket. Stage one Bravo. Copy, one Bravo. We're at full power and that call out one Bravo, that's another one of those abort modes. As we get higher and faster, the logic for Dragon should a contingency occur changes from stage to stage. Attack chill is underway. Chill announcement says we're getting the turbo pump on the second stage engine cooled down in preparation for its light up coming up in just another minute from now. Again, great views looking back and you can see the contrail as we left 39A and the, uh, the shadow of the contrail against the cloud deck around Florida. Now we're coming up, three big sequences and a view live of the crew inside Dragon. They're getting ready. We're going to get three events here, main engine cutoff, stage separation, and then we're going to light the second stage engine. We've heard the throttle down in preparation for stage separation. Eco. Two alpha. Stage separation confirmed. Copy, two alpha. And back ignition. Stage one, boost back start up. All right, stage separation. We've lit the second stage engine. The first stage is into the boost back burn, working its way back towards Cape Canaveral. Views on the left side, that's the first stage. Engine's running as we come back to the launch site, or the landing site. Second stage engine nozzle is visible on the right side as we're powering the Axiom 2 crew into low Earth orbit on the way to the International Space Station. Waiting for call out that the boost back burn is complete. Stage one, boost back shutdown. 
Right on time. First stage completed the first of three burns heading back to the landing site. Second stage continuing on power and on trajectory. Acquisition signal, Bermuda. We head northeast, the Bermuda ground station. Direct SpaceX trajectory nominal. Bermuda is listening into the vehicle now. Nominal trajectory. And the crew hears the call out of a 9-1. 